Hello, and thank you for joining the Cortex XOR 6.5 feature review. For this release, we focused on customer feature requests and improving some of the pain points in our existing workflows. The features we're going to focus on today are new enhancements to our threat intel management platform, the improvements we made to our dev to fraud or remote repository workflow, the ability to build out a CI-CD pipeline for your XOR environment, as well as some of the other XOR enhancements worth highlighting in this release. Let's begin by talking about the threat intel management features. In 6.5, we've added functionality around threat intelligence reporting. This feature is really meant for customers who have threat intel teams that want to produce and distribute their own threat intelligence reports internally. The benefit of this feature is now analysts don't have to work outside XOR to create, publish, and distribute these reports. There's also an ability to control who can access these reports through RBAC controls. Finally, on the reports page, relationships to other XOR objects such as indicators and incidents can easily be accessed, resulting in a better user experience. My favorite thing about this feature is that the report templates can be customized with a markdown language editor. This gives the analyst the flexibility to add additional information as needed while preserving a consistent look and feel to the reports that are produced. XOR Threat Intel Management now includes access to the Unit 42 Intel service. This enables you to identify threats in your network and discover and contextualize trends. The data set is cloud-based and remotely maintained and accessible, allowing you to view the Unit 42 Intel data and add only the information you need to your XOR Threat Intel library. For example, when you search for an IP address, domain, URL, or file on the Threat Intel page, you are able to view the indicator in Cortex XOR as well as the additional information provided by Unit 42 Intel. If the data doesn't exist in your XOR Threat Intel library, you can add the indicator and all the information that Unit 42 has on it. When the indicator already exists, it will be enriched with the most recent data from Unit 42 Intel. Additionally, for files, this feature also provides sample analysis that helps you conduct in-depth investigations, find links between attacks, and analyze threat patterns. If the file indicator is in the Unit 42 Intel service, you have access to a full report on activities, properties, and behaviors associated with that file. You can also see how many other malicious, suspicious, or unknown file samples include the same activities, properties, and behaviors, as well as build other queries to find related samples. Cortex XOR customers can use sessions and submitted data previously submitted from other Palo Alto products for investigation and analysis in XOR as long as they have the appropriate licensing. Session and submission information provides an in-depth look at the communication between devices while the previously discussed sample analysis information provides data on what the file did. We can use the following example to see how this would work together to help your analyst. Let's say that you found a file indicator that has been determined to be malicious. If you had Palo Alto firewalls in your environment, you would be able to use this feature to see where the file came from and where it has gone in your network by viewing the firewall sessions the file has passed through. If you had Cortex XDR, you could see which agents in your environment reported the file, giving you a list of machines that could be infected. At this point, you could block any external IP addresses related to the malicious file with your firewalls and assess and potentially isolate the impacted machines, thus containing the attack. One thing to keep in mind when upgrading to 6.5 is that the Unit 42 functionality requires customers to update their license. Without it, the Unit 42 functionality will throw errors. New Threat Intel Management customers will automatically receive an updated license and existing customers were sent an updated license in December 2021. Development to Prod Enhancements Based on the feedback collected, there was a concerted effort to clean up the Development to Prod feature. This includes a smoother push-pull process and better error handling descriptions. Overall, the user should see improved performance in the workflow. CICD Content Management the CI-CD process helps an organization develop and maintain content for complex content development, utilizing the full functionality of a Git repository. This enables you to be able to do things like run unit tests, perform code reviews, and run test playbooks. Instead of building and maintaining code on a Cortex XOR development environment, you can build the code from your own repository build servers, and utilize third-party tools like CircleCI and Jenkins. 
You can also use version control, undertake code reviews, do lint and validation, use automatic testing, run tests on development machines, etc. With that being said, this is a feature for more advanced users who have a firm grasp of Git, an understanding of CI CD concepts, and a lot of developers who are simultaneously developing content and wanting to follow a more formal CI CD workflow. To use this process, you need to have a Git repository. GitHub, GitLab, and Bitbucket are currently supported at this time. To reiterate, XOR CI-CD is a feature for developers who need to follow a more formal CI-CD workflow where a lot of heavy lifting is going to be automated based on the requirements of the process. The table posted here shows the difference between the CI-CD workflow and the DevProd workflow. The last thing to keep in mind is that both workflows will let you develop and test your content on other machines before you push it into a prod environment, but you'll have to pick CI CD workflow or the dev prod workflow. You can't mix the two. Additional XOR enhancements. The communication task existed before 6.5. This functionality is where you can reach out to an employee from within a playbook, ask them a question and get a response that determines how the playbook will proceed. One of the issues that existed before version 6.5 was there was no user authentication before the user provided a reply. So you couldn't confirm it was the intended user that actually responded. This feature uses AD or a SAML service like Okta to authenticate the user before the response is collected. One of the other things that we're driving to is making our product more content driven. So for our architecture for XOR, we have our core platform and we have our content on top of that. By having more content driven features, we allow better capabilities for users to develop on the product. This feature allows lists, jobs, and pre-processing rules to now be treated as content items. For example, if one of the use cases depends on a scheduled job, you can build and test that job in dev and then use the dev prod functionality to push it to prod. You can import and export list jobs and pre-processing rules because they're now effectively JSON files. Finally, these content items will be available in the marketplace. So now content packs will be able to include and deploy lists, jobs, and pre-processing rules, which should reduce the amount of manual configuration needed. Another thing that was added in this release is the login message. It's a configuration under the troubleshooting page that allows you to put in the required login message to satisfy NIST 800-53 AC-8, or another compliance item your company may have. The text field supports markdown language and allows you some options with formatting the login message. This is the last slide of features we'll talk about. The first one on the slide is now there's playbook persistence. This means that when there's a reboot, the application will now gracefully pause any running playbooks and then resume them where they left off when your server comes back online. The next feature is one that allows a user to set themselves to a way. This status is visible to other users. The cool thing about this feature is that shift management will only assign tickets if the user is on call and active. Another neat feature is that you can now migrate a non-FIPS environment to a FIPS environment. This is fantastic if you're a U.S. government user. You can also download the server logs from the standby server without having to log into the backend for a live backup configuration. You can download these logs by accessing the production log bundle from the active server. They're now included in the log bundle. Additionally, you can access the log bundle from the standby server by attempting to log into that server as well. The last slide I'm going to leave you with is one that contains resources to everything we spoke about during this feature review. Features are always documented in the release notes, which can be found on the Cortex XOR documentation website. This link and the other one will be available in the corresponding live community article for this review. If you have general product questions, a SME or a community member can help. Please post your question in the live community discussion forum and exclude confidential information like screenshots or private information. Let us know if you found this video helpful with a thumbs up and a comment below. We value your feedback. Thank you for your time.